Well, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Um, it's Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Turkey. The Canadians already had their Thanksgiving in October, I do believe, or was it so? Oh, yeah, it's October. Um, anyway, Thanksgiving irony, yeah, um, definitely had some interesting things happen this morning. Kind of prompted me to make a journal here. So this is the audiovisual multimedia version of uh, this journal. And um, here with uh, Richard Hamilton as well. So obviously you're going to get some extra added commentary and things that otherwise would not be in the journal entry. Yeah, it's been pretty freaking ironic. Thanksgiving irony, <clears throat> Black Friday, when people trample others for cheap goods mere hours after being thankful for what they already have. Yeah, that just says it all, doesn't it? <clears throat> Is screen share working okay? Everything can be seen? Yep, I, can, I can see it. Yep. Okay, just making sure. This is definitely interesting, unexpected, and well-timed. Seems almost like a real-life Christmas story of sorts. You know, the ones where we assume that it's just fictional entertainment and has a little to no relevance in actual reality. I wake up this morning to see a Facebook message from my mom. It reads as follows. Elliot posted he works from home, but I don't know what kind of work it is. I wonder if it's something I can do. I doubt it, but... Question, question, question. In order to understand my double-take reaction to this, we must first take a little trip on the magic school bus back in time to late 2011. Thankfully, I have the event logged as a deviation here on DeviantArt, so it's going to make it easier for me to tell this story, as I can simply just display its content and direct quote it. And of course, you got the screen capture here, and that is clickable going you know, back to the original deviation and all that good stuff. <clears throat> uh, at the time, I posted an, an announcement, and I was getting, you know, congratulations and all that, and here comes Elliot. Good job, foo. And, you know, I'm unfriended and all that. <clears throat> you can read all that stuff later if you want. No big deal. I, I pretty much make the same quotes down below anyway that I'm about to read anyway. So in uh, 2011, I had wrote, I'm always talking about paradigm shifting, quantum physics, value in every experience, what you put out, you get back, blah, blah, blah. Every now and again, I get the opportunity to be able to cough up some physical evidence of these things manifesting in my life. Well, this is one of those times. Here's the background story. It's rather multifaceted. A female friend of mine who shall remain nameless was simply because I don't know if she would want to be named, and at the time she wouldn't have, but now that's Katarina Edwards, aka Katarina Aurora, and she has a, a website explaining all this sort of stuff and more. She's very expressive now. She's come out of her shell, so yeah. Anyway, is a brilliant, creative, talented genius. She is so much in touch with how the world truly operates and has so many blessings. A beautiful singing voice, a talent with drawing and painting, poetry, writing, and the list goes on. I think the word normally used here is savant. She is one of the most loving people and best friends anyone could ever ask for. She is very knowledgeable in quantum physics and all sorts of and, and all the sorts of geeky shit I'm into. And she is more brilliant than even she is aware of yet. She's not locked into the systems of psychological control that the mainstream uses to disempower people. She faces her fears, and yes, it can be painful at times, and trauma can happen. But like wind resistance to the nose of a jet plane, she uses it to fly to new heights and evolve herself as a person. Her and her mother are both very wise women. Sure, they both make mistakes like any human, but they learn from them and use this knowledge to better their lives. <clears throat> Well, last night, her and her mother took some heat from the, quote, other kids, 
parentheses, most of whom are of adult age, so kids only in and of the fact that it is a mother and these people are her biological children. Because my friend and her mom just don't fit in the mind control paradigm. They are able to use quantum physics, the power of the Holy Spirit, or whatever label you want to give it based, based in hard science, spirituality, or both. It doesn't matter what you name it. To design their reality as they see fit to, and their success, their successes simply do not fit in with the life must be this huge fucking struggle line of bullshit that society attempts to brainwash us into by making us all insecure like little fucking toddlers and depend on big daddy government and big brother corporations for protection and governance. <clears throat> My allergies or something are kind of acting up a little bit today. Please excuse me. <clears throat> My friend has the ability to make money using her gifts. Her mom has had her own successful business for years. The other siblings, however, feel that their scientific and spiritual views are just unrealistic and insane. And that they both need to wake up and get with the real world and stop deluding themselves and all, this, all of this other hateful twisted garbage. Be damned the evidence, it is apparently easier to anthropomorphize their fears into a psychological projection onto their sister and mother to avoid taking responsibility for their own choices which have landed them in jobs where they feel underappreciated, where, their pressure and uh, where there's high pressure and stress and they have to bust their ass to make the money they make. Because their sister and her mother do not bust their asses they feel that the way they are doing things is a lazy dead-end road. Again, be damned the evidence to the contrary. <clears throat> On top of this, my friend is still recovering from having been deathly sick a few months back, and all of the stress is not good for her health, but I digress. I explained to her about how rough my life has been and that I didn't turn out so bad, and it made her feel a bit better about things. I explained to her how messed up my extended family is, how terrible my elementary and high school years were, and really poured out to her some private moments about my own personal hell. I gave her these two quotes. So long as the man with ambition is a failure, the world will tell him to let go of his ideal. But when his ambition is realized, the world will praise him for the persistence and determination that he manifested during his dark hours, and everyone will point to his life as an example for coming generations. This is invariably the rule. Therefore, pay no attention to what the world says when you are down. Be determined to get up, to reach the highest goal you have in view, and you will. Kristen D. Larson or Christian D. Larson, excuse me. My tongue, when I try to say the words Christian or Kristen, it's like they freaking interchange sometimes. Blah, 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 blah. Then there's the second quote from an old colleague of mine, Marshall Masters. The only truth that matters to each and every one of us as individuals is that unique truth which resonates within each of us. To find such a truth, you must first accept that there are no omnipotent voices or theories. Rather, you must commit yourself to the search for truth fashioned in your own design and conducted at your own pace. Only in this way can you find that unique truth which resonates within you. It is a difficult process, but once you have found it, those who would dissuade you with false entreties, mockery, or the threat of humiliation will become irrelevant to you. This is not a heat and serve TV dinner. In order to get at the truth, you have to cook it yourself. I told her that real success grows like a tree and you can't have a 40-foot tree overnight after planting a seed. So as this tree grows and people see your success is continuing to increase and how easy it seems to be for you, that misery loves company and people will try to drag you down, but that they can't if you respect their rights to their individuality. And if this means they choose to be a cynical idiot, so be it. It's not your problem. You don't have to get locked into their drama. I told her that as entrepreneurs begin to manifest their success, 
others around them who are locked into the lie of struggling to get ahead, instead of being happy for you and supportive, may Satanize you. It reminds me of some family members you have, Rich. <clears throat> Demonize you. Tell you to stop dreaming. To get a real job. That your life is going nowhere. To wake the hell up. Or in case of certain family members, when you're positive, they'll be like, you're such a negative attitude, Richard. Shut up. <clears throat> they will say horrible things, and family and friends may even disown you in the process of this. I told her, it took a while for my parents to see that I'm moving in the right direction. And they would tell me similar things and claim that I'm just fucking around and whatever. But then I really started manifesting some success and they started to see it and started to take me more seriously. I mean, granted, at this point, I'm not exactly rich and rolling in the dough and whatever and uber wealthy, but I'm a hell of a lot better off now than I was. And I'll continue to move in that direction. My computer business, making money online, my fish and pond business, and so on. It's slow, but increasing steady. Each new month is better than the last, more successful than the last. It's like growing the tree seedling. As long as I continue to take care of it and not submit to the weeds of cynicism, that it will mature into that proverbial 40-foot tree. I told her that despite all of this, I still have some so-called friends that I lose as they tell me I need to get a job and such. Haters gonna hate. All of this was this morning. So this evening, I noticed a comment on one of my posts in Facebook. It was one where I was updating my friends on the status of how I've been doing with making money on YouTube. I got congratulations and all of this, except for this one so-called friend of mine, Elliot. God bless synchronicity is within 12 hours of me explaining all I had just said above and about how we need to let the people who want to detach <clears throat> create that void so we can fill with better people and things so that we are not so weighed down. Synchronicity strikes. Elliot responds with, get a job, foo, and removes me from his friend list. Yeah, friends list. Well, oddly enough, still keeping my mother added, LOL. Maybe he kept her added so that, you know, it leads up to this moment right here. Hey, one never knows. I just told my female friend, that being Katarina, about how even some of my so-called friends do to me exactly what her siblings are doing to her. And as if I had placed my order in a drive through to a restaurant, there it is. I can't imagine a better way to be rid of so-called counter them to be rid of a so-called counterproductive friendship than to have it strengthen a good friendship with a wonderful person that my anonymous well not so anonymous now Katerina female friend truly is. Last I checked, Elliot had been in an unevolving dead end fast food job for years now, busting his ass for not nearly as much as he's worth. He has mad skills in the radio industry, musical composition, DJing, business and office management, and more. This guy has sick talent, and he's no idiot, this is for sure. Yet he wastes his life away, the job he hates, getting fatter and more miserable. Well, I've lost over 70 pounds, my life continues to become more happy and blessed with so many wonderful new friends and increasing successes. And his punk ass is telling me to get a job, foo? LOL. Who is truly the fool but he has the right to think what he wants to think and to feel how he wants to feel so no hard feelings to my old blast from the past of a friend who was but no longer is i wish him well he deserves better than he's allowed himself and i hope he realizes that before it's too late i would hate to see him waste all this created genius on fucking burgers honestly but case for us to my female friend, let this inspire you. Fuck the cynics. You've got multi-million dollar talent. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And girl, ain't no gun left. Gum left on. So now fast forward to 2015. There's her website header. Obviously, as I said, she's gone from this quiet little girl that is was afraid of expressing herself to full blown wee. <laughs> 
And that's obviously clickable, and it'll take you to KatarinaRoy.com. <clears throat> Her mom was so happy about my deviation upload, she actually printed it out. The friend in question, whom I wasn't sure whether or not she wanted to be mentioned, is none other than, P than the PSET crew's very own Katarina Roy, formerly Katarina Edwards. She isn't so squeamish about telling her story these days. In fact, you can check her out as she tells you all about it and what's been going on since then on her website. Since 2011, Katarina has traveled all across the United States, from coast to coast and everywhere in between, including Chicago, of course. She met her husband, Paul, while she was in Costa Rica, where they both also traveled through most of Central America. They've since been living in Austin, Texas, and are about to move to Hawaii. Being self-employed, apparently, was not the foolish choice for Katerina. Anyways, I digress. Back to the update on Elliot. So my curious self wanted to see exactly what it was that motivated Elliot to suddenly start working from home. So I decided to take a peek. The question of what he does with his at-home work or why he works at home now was not answered. It does, however, seem that Uncle Scrooge might have been visited by the ghost of, ghosts of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. And as far as the Elliot screenshot, why don't you read that, Richard? It'll give me a chance to rest my fucking mouth. Okay. This makes no sense to me. I work from home. I have a large chat of people that I speak to on a daily basis. Yesterday when I came into the chat, I started, I stated happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Not one person replied. Today I said it again and received one reply out of 35 people. This may speak to my popularity at work. However, this is not the point of my post. This is the time of year we dreamed of as kids. Could not wait for the holidays, time off from school, getting to see the other kids from the other side of the family you rarely get to see, seeing Santa, the Salvation Army dude with his bell, getting the sales inserts with all of the ads for toys, trying to find out when they would play the Claymation Christmas movies. Back in my day, you had to wait for a commercial ad during He-Man, for the showing, we hated watching the other classic movies parents would watch. I love them now. My point is this, folks. We are still that kid inside. We still love the holidays. Who said it was wrong to feel just because we got older? Really? Let the spirit of the holidays runneth over you. Stop being negative Nancys. You all have next year to do that. Let this. Let your walls down. Embrace the spirit. Do something silly. Walk and strut like a turkey. Go and go gobble, gobble through the house. Who knows, you might have a little fun. <laughs> a little over four years ago, his attitude was, working as a slave for the corporations is the highest importance of life. If not, then you're a fool. To suddenly talking like a living, breathing example of it's a wonderful life. If there's hope for this guy, there's hope for almost anyone. Maybe he's just been dealing with his dark side. And here's where Katarina pops in in spirit. I'm melting! Okay, no, not really. But uh, this video is kind of a continuation of the last video where I'm talking about making peace with your self-image. And I had a couple people asking me, well, Katerina, how do I do this? This is such a far off concept for me. I don't really get this. I don't know what to do and how to do it. And like, please inform me, like I am a sixth grader. It's okay, it's all right. I mean, this is a really weird concept because in this culture, that we live in, it's really normal for people to be at odds with themselves all the time and just walk around and live their life like that. And I mean, that's kind of the pits, right? Like everybody's miserable all the time on some degree, you know, like either walking around being upset with their jobs, with their spouses, with themselves, uh, with their parents, etc. You know, everybody has that one little thing that's just really, really eaten at them. But, you know, it doesn't really have to be that way. And in fact, 
life really is pretty sucky when your whole life is consumed with being miserable. So um, the way to really accept and integrate these parts of yourselves, at least from my personal experience, uh, because that's really all that I can talk and speak from, is really, okay, so first backtrack. What you wanna do is when you start noticing that it comes up, we have a tendency to wanna to push it away, right? We wanna be like, no, 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 go back into the closet where you came from, you evil skeleton. And we ignore it and repress it and medicate it and you know try to push it back with alcohol, drugs, food, uh, TV watching, et cetera. And we don't really want to allow it to like raise up to the surface, right? Because what's going to happen? You know, we're going to lose our spouse. We're going to lose our jobs. Or our life is going to fall apart if we let ourselves really feel the tremendousness of this aspect of ourselves. And normally it's suppressed anger, depression, sadness, rage. And it's masked in a whole bunch of ways, like through apathy and, and getting angry at other people. And just all of these little things that we are bothered by about ourselves. Um, so when you have that come up and you're really sitting there and being like, wow, I'm being a total bitch right now and that's part of my shadow side and that shadow side really needs to go away and I want to fix and heal that shadow side and make it not come again so I can be perceived as this nice, kind, pretty little princess going la 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 and I'm just wonderful and, you know, in a, in a very Disney fairy tale sort of way, you want to be just like this one dimensional being and this being of light and love and happiness all the time. But that's really impractical because our, our emotions and these aspects of ourselves are guidance to our truth. So if you ignore it and push it aside and get rid of it, uh, you're kind of bastardizing yourself. So don't do that. All right. So this is how you deal with it when you are noticing these parts of yourself coming up that are really uncomfortable, maybe you're a really clingy person and, and you have a really hard time in relationships, like allowing your, your partner their space, or you just broke up with someone and you're noticing this tendency to like want to call them all the time, be kind of neurotic and crazy, or you just got fired from your job and you are like peeling out of parking lots and being really angry like there are all these different moments where we're acting less than our shining spiritual selves right and we judge ourselves for it and we're like oh i just wish that would go away shadow self so when you are in those moments, it is really, 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 and hear me on this, it is really, 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 really important for you to stop whatever you're doing and like just feel what you're feeling right in that moment. Whether you're so angry that if you stop for a minute yelling at the other person, you just start bursting into tears, that's beautiful, that's okay, that's release, that is, the healing of the crap that's coming through your circulatory and nervous system and your whole being in that moment. And you're allowing it to pass through. And that is really the most crucial part is the allowing of it to pass through, whether it's anxiety that you're feeling in that moment and you are just so anxious that you're terrified. Like if you have to sit there and like shake, like that's okay. Because you know what's gonna happen? is that that feeling is going to move like a wave through you and it will pass through and then you're going to have this profound sense of clarity come over you within a few minutes and sometimes it takes an hour or so of just really like letting it out if it's tears or hyperventilating or something it's all right you know and if it's a tremendous fear that you have, that you're really wanting to push away and be like, ah, I wish I wasn't so afraid of this. Sometimes exposing yourself to it and allowing that feeling to pass through you is really, really good medicine. It's really uncomfortable to do this kind of stuff. I mean, it sounds simple to talk about it. It sounds really simple for me to just be like, hey, yeah, this is what you need to do. But 
the best instructor for you to move through these things about yourself that you don't like is to really ride the wave of experience. It's not to seek help from other people. It's to really get in tune with your own self and to feel into your own experience. I mean, that's something that a lot of us just don't do because we're so used to needing to go see psychiatrists and doctors and therapists to go handle our deep emotional issues. But what if we start to realize that these emotions and these aspects of ourselves are indicators of things that we have denied or repressed in ourselves and now it's just bubbling up to the surface to be acknowledged and to be seen that's cool that's that's really important information and it's not something that you need to medicate or to push away or to get rid of or bastardize or you know orphan like that's a part of you and you really need to like welcome it back in by experiencing what it has for you and then you can make rational decisions based on the information that you glean from that experience so when you when you allow that stuff to sink in like oftentimes it's going to be really 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 unnerving and you're going to feel really nervous about it and scared and you're not going to want to really allow the full total experience because it's a it's a moment of surrender that you really need to undertake and that surrender can feel like death in a way it can feel like you're dying because part of you that has been holding on so tightly to get this uh, part of you pushed away and into the shadows and into the darkness that part of you has to relinquish its power and its control over you. So, I mean, I've done this a lot. So that's why I'm talking about it so lightheartedly because I mean, I understand what that feels like to feel like you're just dying right there in fear and you're dying in anxiety, but it's really not as bad as it sounds. Like it may feel like it for like a split second, but what is like, seriously, it's, it, it's going to be so much more worth it for you to just feel whatever it is that's coming up for you than it is to uh, like suppress it for decades or even years or months or weeks or whatever and to just walk around living a half-life. Like that's a really miserable existence too and I've done that one as well. So um, so when you have an option like to choose one or the other, I really hope you take what I say to heart and really feel into that and really feel into your experience and, and to ask yourself, like, what is this giving you in this moment? Like, why is this aspect of you rearing its head in this moment? Are you afraid you're going to be abandoned? Are you afraid of rejection? Is that why you're acting out this way? Like, there's so much information within your behaviors and your actions and your reactions to help you find your truth in that moment, to help you find what is really the cause of why you are being this way. Because obviously it's, it's a lot more fun to go through life being joyful and happy, but it's also really, really important to really honor these little bubbles of the stuff that we don't like, you know, the contrast. And to allow yourself to really explore what's being said in that, because then that's going to help guide you along your path even better. Like if you're coming upon a friend or something that, you know, is causing all of these really weird, uncomfortable feelings within you, that's really good information. And it's going to help you make your decisions. So if you're denying and repressing and pushing away the stuff that is uncomfortable and unspiritual, you're going to only be operating with half a set of data. So anyway, that is my spiel on that. And if you liked this video, please sign up for more email updates where I am going to be spitting these out every week and really doing my best to deliver all of that I have inside of me that I have glean from the past decade of really this search for being myself to the fullest. So, uh, yeah, take that in. You are okay. You are not flawed. You are a perfect human being. And anybody that tries to tell you any different has an agenda of their own.
So take care and keep in touch. Man, all that wind, it's like Katarina was really trying to give us a blowjob there with uh, <laughs> all that <laughs> going on. Of course, she doesn't necessarily give weekly updates, but she gives gives them as she can. She uh, she does her she does her best. Just ask Mister Klingon over here. Um, anyway, hopefully he, meaning Elliot, has been learning the lesson that the most important thing is to just authentically be yourself. If you're not being yourself, then how do you expect to succeed at anything in your life? as Katarina was just explaining, and as I elaborate on in surprisingly much fewer words than <laughs> Katarina just did, two minutes, 49 seconds, in PSEC 2013, don't be afraid to be yourself. It's oh, I thought he was chugging a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> it, actually, it's, it's just what the doctor ordered. And just with the doctor ordered that. <laughs> so, what would you be your like tips and tricks to just get started and do something crazy? Like, is it like spontaneous? Do you plan your crazy out? Some and some. I mean, like, what is it that that inspires you to just say, "Oh, let's put this on video." Impulsivity <laughs> and spontaneity and things coming. The first most important thing is um, don't be afraid to be yourself. Because anything based on not being yourself, it's not going to do too well because it's going to be fake as hell. I mean, you got to be a natural at what you're doing. So you have to be aligned with yourself. So that means you got to be yourself while you're doing it. Because <laughs> people wonder why the hell they sell everything. It's like, well, you're trying to do everything everybody else's way. And because we live in the totalitarian fascist fourth fucking right, um, basically, nobody else's way is going to work because, you know, school is just like, obey, don't ask questions, and don't eat Pop-Tarts or we're throwing you in jail. So, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just like we're so locked down. You know, a lot of people say that, you know, well, people are just lazy and they don't want to take responsibility. Well, it's not so much that they don't want to take responsibility. It's that we're trained by society to be, to be terrified of everything you know it's like we're terrified to take responsibility to not take responsibility we're terrified to live we're terrified to die we're, we're terrified to love we're terrified to, ha to hate we're terrified to stay home we're terrified to go outside we're terrified to do anything and everything and that's why george w bush has the war on terror war on terror he started that up because you're aligning with the idea of terror so then your reality is like oh my god terror be fucking afraid of everything and that makes you fucking useless <laughs> I mean, when they're terrified of everything, you're cowering in a corner, even being afraid of the fact that you're in the fucking corner cowering. So, I mean, it's like, it just totally paralyzes you. You just got to kind of burst out and not be afraid to be yourself. And that's really the biggest key, because until you reach that, anything you try to do is going to be screwed. And I learned that so many times the hard way. I would follow all these policies and procedures and methods and whatever. I'd be like, why didn't it work? I followed everything to the letter. It didn't work because I wasn't in my fucking sovereignty. Everybody else is making me their bitch. So where was I supposed to be going? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yep. This is just a pop tart, and this is just a clock down to destruction. In my opinion, the baby boomer generation is a generation that stood complacently idle as a bunch of Wall Street psychopaths took over by distracting the masses, filling their heads full of a, a false sense of neurotic patriotism, whilst we all did the totalitarian tiptoe into the world we live in today. Still not having learned from Germany's mistake in letting a dictator like Hitler rise to power, most of the 80s kids the generation with the most innovation and creativity that could have set things straight, became assimilated by the corporate Borg. Now, in the age of information, it's not up to any one group or generation to fix anything. Now it's a simple choice. Be the change you want to create to help make this world a better place, or 
be left in the dust of those who choose wisdom over complacent foolishness. I believe a better world is being created because if it was not, we would all be oblivious to the problems and would think everything is perfectly fine, like lemmings off a cliff. This is not happening. Instead, human awareness is expanding at an exponential rate, filling my heart with a sense of hope for humanity. And it says here, a full video version of this journal entry will be available here shortly. Yeah, that little line is going to go away and will be replaced with this right here, right now. And um, on a side note, I would like to take a moment to honor a friend who is no longer with us. One of our PSEC admins and a good dear friend, Jay Larson, has obtained a one-way ticket into the zero-point field. This is where most people would say, rest in peace, but I sure doubt he's resting. He's off having fun exploring the infinite infinities of limitless potential in the vast reaches of time and space. Safe journeys, friend. We'll miss you here on this little blue and green ball you once called home. And then that's him. And uh, put one of his quotes in here that he was infamous for. Difficult we do right away. Impossible just takes a little longer. Jay Larson, 1956 to 2015. Yeah, and then I was going to to do this hangout, and I'm thinking, oh, well, too bad Richard isn't here. You know, it would be cool to, to have him with me on this. And then I get a call from Kristen, and she was talking to me about stuff, and she's been going through some reflections that are, like, totally in alignment with this year. So I'm like, oh, that's an interesting synchronicity. And then I get a call from Katerina, and she is also going through reflections that, like, directly relate to, like, all of this, so, like, double synchronicity. And then, while we're on the line, Richard messages me, and we merge him into the call, but then Katerina had to go take care of some things. Um, Richard, you may or may not know that she's actually about to board a plane to go back to Oregon for, for Thanksgiving, so that's kind of a part oh. of her and getting things together yeah yeah she's gonna, yeah she's going home for Thanksgiving with the family oh yep so that Seriously. that's a part that's a part of her hurry <laughs> apparently there were some things that she needed to take care of like oh shit I didn't do that gotta go Thanksgiving is going to be interesting for me this year. This is going to be like the first year that my family has literally done, like my main family that I usually always do Thanksgiving with is doing nothing. But the other side of my family that rarely does anything is doing something and they're going to the coast and, you know, it's just like year of action. It's like reverse opposite. But at the same time, the reason why my family's not doing anything, my main family is because, um, my cousins, who kind of are the main bread earners, as it were, um, one of my cousins, uh, Becca, has a nice house um, out in the Central Point area, or, well, they did, but they're selling it, and they're going to be going to a Broncos game in Colorado the day afterwards and all of that stuff. So, I mean, they're, they're doing all kinds of stuff. She's going to school. She's doing all of these different things, you know. So just kind of the year of action at work and kind of a realignment for the um, year of unity, you know, or year of action times two, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, I, I was telling Katerina before you got on the line, I said, yeah, you know, I was talking about how going into 2014, you know, 2014 into 2015, I was calling this the year of action and then like all these other people online started calling it the year of action and like people who it would be an extremely low probability that they would have seen that video in which I called it, you know, the year of action, like people who don't even know me or talk to me or whatever. I'm just hearing it all over the place. Year of action, year of action, year of action. And then Bashar is calling 2015 and 2016 the years of expansion and contraction, which also seems to be a very accurate description, you know, kind of out with the old in with the new kind of like a reconfiguration of everything which i mean if you're taking action of course there's a lot of things that are going to be reconfigured and me and katarina were talking about this whole like hundredth monkey you know syndrome come kicking in with the phrase year of action 
And I'm, I'm just like, yeah, 2016 is going to be like, you know, the year of action on crack, on steroids times 20, you know, like that sort of thing. And I, and I said, it, it's kind of like um, 2015 has been like, you know, playing flight simulator and 2016 is actually going to be getting into a real aircraft, metaphorically speaking. And then, you know, after that, not knowing I said that, Richard was watching this funny video about Microsoft <laughs> Flight Simulator, and it's like, oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I had just mentioned that to her, but he didn't know that. And I'm currently playing Flight Simulator right now, so it even makes it funnier. Yeah, so... It's been a really freaking interesting morning for me so far. Holy God. Really interesting. Mm-hmm. It's been an interesting last couple of days. Last yeah. week, really. Yeah. Interesting. But then the last week, Jay died, and, like, on top of that... You know, it hasn't been an interesting last week or last month. It's just been an interesting fucking year, okay? There, I said it. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like every day has been interesting. There's not, ah, there it hasn't been one period that has not been interesting this year, so. It's all been at interesting. Least, at least we can't complain about being bored, right? Yeah, no shit. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, have your family at the beginning of the year disown you, you know. You know, you people know who you are and then Well only a few only a few members. I mean it's only a few members. I'm saying that's why I said you people know know who you are. You know. Saying having some of your family disown you. Yeah, I, let's let let's just say that that's Two people and two idiots, so a grand total of four morons. Yep. Like Out I of said, like people know who you are. Yep, yep. And I still don't give a shit. And we'll and we'll be talking more in depth about that come December. And by that time, no, I won't be saying anything. You'll be saying something. Yeah, I know. But I th I said we. It was plural. It was we. In other words, we will both be involved in that discussion. But the main thing you'll be talking about is by that time, you will have seen the new Star Wars movie. So we can also mm -hmm. go, go into that, too. Not No spoilers, though. I mean, I want to... I, I definitely want to see... The, ooh, download leave your the album. Leave, 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 leave the best details for the end of the year. Oh, cool. Download your albums. You know, I was just thinking this morning, like, before I even got on here, I was thinking... You know, I wish there was a way to like, like, just download an entire Facebook album at once, and now synchronistically, I go into here and download all your albums. Dang, the universe is being a freaking troll. I swear to God, today's like get fucking trolled by the universe day. Like a motherfucker, fucking troll. This year has been trolled by get trolled by the universe year. I'm kidding, fucking nuts. Uh huh. But this is the image I was going for here. Um. This last week has been very calm, no geomagnetic storms and not many solar flares. Approximately 12 hours, give or take, prior to Jay Larson's death, we see this red spike on the graph. It was quiet long before and quiet ever since. The, the chart is time-stamped in UTC, universal time. Yeah, so that's crazy. Look at that, like, and then Jay makes his exit. But it's all green and clear before that, all green and clear after that. So I, I found that to be an interesting synchronicity there. Kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm guessing you're pretty much free for the day, right? Negative. I need to, uh, I, got, I have school today. I'm free tomorrow. I have school today. I have to finish my chapter seven reading need to go to the store get another thing because they're going to be doing it we're basically we have to have 20 hours minimum of class time so uh we have to go into school today which is kind of suckish but oh well 
and I've got like four bottles of cider chilling in the fridge for the potluck and I'm going to go get some cups at the store so that way, you know, people have cups to drink out of because I don't think we're a Klingon society where we share the bottle of cider. Yeah. A bunch of drunk Klingons. I don't think that's really appropriate. <laughs> Uh, but but tomorrow, um, as I told conservative Pip, because I know we got to do a a, a deviant art, um, you know, artist feature Google Hangout thing with uh, conservative Pip. I told him that the millisecond that you're available for that sort of thing, that uh, we'd let him know. So it looks like there's a probability that that might happen tomorrow. Yep, that's going to be probably the best window to do it on because Friday I'll be working and then. After that, for the weekend, I'm pretty much going to be gone until, you know, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening at some point, so. And then Monday, you know, I go back to my normal schedule, you know, again. And so so pretty much any time tomorrow as far as you know. Any time tomorrow is pretty much going to be the best window, yep. Yep. All right. I'll drop him a note on the card here and let him know that. I'm kind of in a love-hate relationship with this with this new interface. Like some aspects of it are really cool, but others of it are really sucking dick. Hopefully they fix it. But like, you know, you don't the the user list, now you have to go to like the main DeviantArt page for the user list, and then they don't show all of the the data on you know like last scene and all that on the user list like they used to and the user list used to be up in the corner here with a drop down and now there isn't i mean it's cool that you can hover there and then get this whole list and then click to see notifications to you know do your regular uh notifications page thingy and you know it's cool that you know you can hover over that and see notes i'm not going to hover over that because that shows part of the beginning of the notes and I don't want to accidentally breach anybody's privacy um, then you know for this gallery favorites groups you can click that and it expands you know that's that's a pretty convenient you know little navigation there and you know I, I think a lot of these features are pretty cool but I really do hate that they don't have the user list up there and I also hate how there's literally no deviation navigation whatsoever have you noticed that you try to you try to navigate through through someone's gallery or through groups or whatever and like you cannot there's no before after you can't like you know exit you know the the display and go back into it like you used to it's like you it's like when you literally have to open each deviation manually into a separate tab otherwise you know you'll completely lose your your place and that I think sucks a huge. What I really get, what I get really annoyed with is having to go on the actual deviation itself, have to click the favorites button, scroll down to your folder, and then click. That is that is such a waste of unnecessary time. You know, when I can yeah. just drag it, when I used to just be able to drag it like I can with the bar that I can use right now, while they still let us. Um, you know, just dragging and dropping the favorites. That that really sucks dick. It's it sucks. Yeah, and also the, um, the the thing where you can edit the information for the for the deviation stuff, it's really freaking glitchy. Like sometimes it'll lock up to where you can't type in there or anything, and then I have to scroll all the way back up to the top, move my mouse around at the top a bit, then scroll all the way back down and move my mouse around a bit, then go back to the middle, and then like the interface will wake up and go, oh, I think I'll let him type something now. But if I don't do that, then it like just remains locked to the point where I can't even hit the submit or update button. And I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah, that is glitchy as a motherfucker. And they don't, they, they, like the whole ability to navigate deviations is fucking gone. And then what you said about, you know, the favorites and stuff, that's gone. And the user listing is gone. Hopefully they put those things back. I would like to think that they're going to because eliminating some of the most important features of uh, the DeviantArt website would be just an add-on to the slap in the face of this fucking $50 a year for fucking core bullshit. It's just like, oh, not only did you jack the prices and not add anything new, now you're taking things away that are necessary for site navigation. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so like hold... I, said, I don't have I don't have any real faith of them that are actually correcting their errors on this. I just have a feeling they're just gonna leave it as is and say, fuck all you guys, you get to deal with it and just there. Deal with your shitty site navigation. We don't care. We're gonna fuck up the site some more in other areas that'll piss you off in the future and not do anything. Well, if they do that, then you know, right now they've already reduced the, the number of you know, paying subscribers, whether they know it or not. And now if they do something like that, there's going to be even more people that are still paying that are just going to decide, you know what, why am I going to uh, gonna pay, in, you know, an increase and get even less features than I was getting before? Fuck this. And they'll just start they'll stop paying, and then they'll just use, like, Adblock Plus <laughs> to get rid of the ads, and then they'll stop paying. Um, so, yeah, I mean... You know, it, as it stands, I think six months down the road, DeviantArt's going to be forced to go back to, like, the $30 rate because they're going to be like, oh, shit, look at how much our profits have just dropped like a motherfucker. It's like, well, that's what happens when you when you take it and, and put it out of, like, you know, half a million plus people's, you know, fucking affordability range. You know, no matter how much of a spiel they write on how, you know, how this this price hike is fucking needed or whatever um it doesn't change the fact that when you put things out of people's affordability range instead of paying you something now they can't afford to pay you anything because you just literally stop them from being able to, to give you money so it's like that's going to be a hard lesson for them to learn mm -hmm. but they will Like I always used to do, like come Christmas time when they do the they give one get one, you give someone a, a subscription, and you know then you know you get one for yourself. I used to kind of load up on my own subscription stuff doing that. You know I'd play like Santa Claus with about you know three four people deserving deviants. Now I can only do that for for one person, and no, I'm not going to say who that is. I, I never say who I do that that for. I'm not looking for, you know, recognition or fucking whatever, so I'm always quiet about that. I do that privately. But now I can only do this for one person because of the, the you know, the fucking price hike. It's like, you know, fuck you. I'm, it's like, you know, I, I, you know, when I used to spend, like, 90 plus dollars on it it you know went for a whole bunch of different people and it's like what now if i spend 100 bucks it's only going to go to to fucking two people really you guys fucking suck so no my little protest is you know i'm still going to do it for myself and one other person but that's it i'm not i'm not going to go the distance like like i did before and there's going to be I'm not they're going to that i wouldn't even do it i wouldn't even do it for another person you know i wouldn't even fucking do it for another person well that's you, know? you. i just I'd just be like, fuck, fuck this bullshit. I wouldn't that's even your, do it for another person. That's your choice. But I need to, you know, I want to renew for myself anyway. And, you know, if another person can come along for that ride, then cool. That's just, you know, my view on it. You're allowed to have your view. That's fine. I have my view on it. But I'm definitely not doing what I used to do. And so they will see a sales drop as a result of that. And um, I'm sure a lot of other people are of both mine and your mentalities, either, you know, drastically reducing what they would do or not even like doing it. Like I said, I am not surprised at all if they will not do that sale. I am surprised if they'll just cut that completely and say, fuck it, you guys can just pay the $50 or whatever and just deal with it and whatever. Oh, I don't yeah, even they're think not... they're going to do that. Yeah, I don't, think they're gonna, I don't even think they're going to do the Christmas time buy one, get one thing. I don't even think they're going to do that. I think they're so smug and full of shit that they're just going to be like, eh, we don't need to do that anymore. It wasn't making, you know, and they'll act like it wasn't making them money anyway, even though that's a total lie. And it was yeah. making them money. What it really comes what? down to is they're just trying to consolidate profits themselves. I forgot where this is, but isn't there a site on DVA, DA somewhere, some sort of statistics that show exactly like how many people were getting accounts through what and didn't the statistics show that like the bulk of their new subs subscribers came through the give one get one yeah hold on let me, let me scroll down here because i recall into... you bring that to my attention but i don't remember where that was at where is it 
I put it on my journal. My core has got to go. Okay, can you see my screen? Oh, uh, let me let me switch to that. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's small, but I can see it. Okay, yeah, here it is, right here. How much is DeviantArt worth? Um, all the different websites, worthofweb.com, webvaluecheck.com, uh, www.webbuka.com, www.checkwebsiteprice.com, and www.urlrate.com. One says $907 million a day, or $907 million, which is equivalent to $244,198 a day. One is saying $32,260,235, which is equivalent to $33,163 a day. One is saying $23,800,716 a day, which is equivalent to $31,734 a day. One is saying $14,880,000. Okay, that's nice, people. Yeah, have your car alarms beeping. Thank you. Um, one is saying fourteen million eight hundred eighty thousand dollars a day, which, or you know, the worth is it's twenty thousand three hundred eighty-two dollars a day. One is saying one hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred thirty-six million six hundred forty-one thousand six hundred dollars, which is equivalent to one hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred twenty dollars a day. Now, where's the one that 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 stated that X amount of people came directly through the give one get one? I don't remember which one that was. Um, I know there was one that that was able to keep track of that somehow. Let's see. Worth of web. I just don't remember where exactly that was. I think it was this one. www.dvnr.com calculate. Either way, they're making a they're making a sick amount of money, and that they, we're gonna we're gonna see those statistics drop. Six okay. months. From now, we, six months from now, we should check that shit again. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I don't rem I don't remember what site or where it was that literally said, like, what subscribers came through which method. Yeah, I remember what you're talking about. Um, but whichever one it was it did notate that like literally the bulk of new new subscriptions came through give one get one cuz i mean look at this potential revenue per day $239,998 a day 7 million um, you know like 7 and a half million a month and 86 million a year tell me they do not make money yeah no kidding i mean they are so full of shit it's not even funny they make more money than most people would even dream mm. and they're sitting there saying they're broke it's like i don't think you're broke i think it's just you want more of the cut and you're not happy with how much you're getting and you're going to selfishly destroy yourself as a result exactly yeah rip your web website to shreds spy what's in your coffee oh that's right um various dicks of other social media uh, assholes that we're not going to mention. William Black's cum. Yeah. The fuck is in your coffee, Spide? Crack cocaine, methamphetamine, a mix of the both. <laughs> okay, let's check webvaluecheck.com. Yeah, I know, I know when Spide got cornered, he was just kind of like, 
Oh, uh, well, we'll definitely be doing a deal where people can stock up on subscriptions at the old price. And that, yeah, right. You're not going to fucking do that. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't think they're gonna get get rid of the the give one get one I could be wrong I don't think they're gonna get rid of that but I, but because that system is already in place to go off automatically but I don't think they're gonna go out of their way to let people you know uh, stock up on subscriptions at the old rate no way in hell spied was full of crap mm hmm Come on, here we go. I'm just saying they're gonna eventually they're gonna end up needing to go back to the old rate to prevent being bought out, and they're gonna learn mm -hmm. that. I mean, they're simply going to need to because there will be no other way to, for them to survive their own income statistics will make that very clear to them. Yeah, they're saying $32 million, which even still is a lot. That's still thirty-three thousand dollars a day. You know, nine hundred ninety-four thousand dollars a month. Eleven million a year. I don't know why Google's. I don't know why it's being so slow right now. This website just for whatever reason, it's wanting to be slow. Uh, okay, machine, come on. Here we go. Load up the third one. Let's go through here. Average monthly income from advertising, this website says, is $897,963 U.S. dollars. Yeah, there's all sorts of different estimates. I would just like to know which one literally was able to track it back to the give one, get one. I think that was on a comment somewhere. I don't even remember. Because there was somebody who was able to keep track of that somehow. Yeah. At any rate, you can get the idea here. The point is freaking made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the amount that this thing, the, the, the website is worth a shitload of money. Yeah. So back on the original topic here, um, anything else to add about this interesting freaking morning? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing else that I really feel I could add or say. Yeah, I think we've pretty much gone over. It just seems like um, 
you know, these classic holiday movies and shit are starting to become <laughs> more and more a part of reality. It's just kind of hilarious, kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks everybody for uh, watching, listening, reading, whatever, and uh, we'll catch you all next time. Happy Turkey. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>